Craig Hafer, I'm a gastroenterologist here at St Vincent's and also a senior lecturer at University of New South Wales. We know your gut is lined by billions of different organisms and these are all we refer to as the microbiome. And we know changes in the microbiome can be linked with lots of different diseases in the gut and outside, including obesity, diabetes, colitis, and even certain types of cancers. And so if we know that there is a change in this microbiome causing all these things, we want to figure out a way of can we fix this microbiome as a way of to treat the disease. And that's where faecal transplants come in. And so what we do is we try to take a healthy microbiome, a whole balance, that whole ecosystem from a healthy donor. And we do it via their poop, their faecal material. And we in some way or form give it to the patient and get it to reline their gut and repopulate their microbiome as a way of treating disease. So we can either make it into a liquid, we can turn it into a powder through freeze drying it and then put it into capsules. And then we need to get it into the patient's gut. So we can do that either at the time of a colonoscopy. So you do a colonoscopy like you would and then you put the liquid into the large bowel and that that sticks to the gut wall and repopulates the microbiome. And that other way of doing it is we can turn it into a powder, so you freeze dry it, that you put into a capsule and then you swallow it like any other capsules and it no longer looks, smells, tastes or anything looks like poo, it's like a probiotic. So there's lots of different potential indications for this. We've been using it for almost 10 years now for a treatment of Clostridium difficile or C. difficile infection, which is an infection in the gut that comes on when there's usually someone is sick or has some sort of imbalance in their microbiome, so either after antibiotics um, or if they're really quite sick in hospital. So we know if, if particularly given that this infection is driven by an imbalance in your microbiome, if we can repopulate that with faecal transplant, it is highly effective. Studies have shown it's over 90% successful, even in patients in intensive care or in hospital or that have had multiple recurrences. And that's really what really pushed faecal transplants out of the world of almost a bit of witchcraft and into clinical practice. There's now national guidelines for this. There's the multiple stool banks that can actually collect it and produce it and make fecal transplants. Like you have with the blood bank, you've got stool banks. So it's really pushed it into the spotlight as an important therapy. The whole field of the microbiome and fecal transplants is, it's being investigated in every single specialty, every part of the human body with disease. It is a really fast moving area and it's a really exciting area. It's really opened up the world to ways of trying to change your microbiome as a way of treating a disease. We run a number of clinical trials in ulcerative colitis, in Crohn's disease, in irritable bowel syndrome. So whilst you're using whatever therapies you're doing, you can treat the microbiome as well to have that synergistic effect to improve the outcomes and efficacy of a lot of therapies that we do. So I don't think it will ever replace what we're doing, but I think it'll work really well hand in hand in lots of diseases that we treat.